the sun has been firing big solar flares like a machine gun, and several solar storms have been launched that are Earth-directed. How will this affect you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week picks up in a major way. As we take a look at our front side sun, you can see that bright region in the north as it's rotating onto the earth facing disk. You can see it begins to get a little bit busy. You start seeing a little bit of activity. And as it rotates to about 30 degrees of center disk, watch this thing light up like a Christmas tree. Wham, wham, wham. My goodness, it just starts firing flares like crazy. It's almost like the sun is going tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick with like a machine gun and every single time you see a big blast wave or you see one of these big jets coming out it's also launching a solar storm and these solar storms as you can see there's quite a few of them being launched these solar storms some of them are earth directed and man has it made it difficult for forecasters to try to figure out this mess because they're just coming at us so quickly it's hard to kind of make sense of it all but we do have multiple solar storms that are coming to earth and we'll talk more about that in a minute Luckily, though, as this region rotates around the center disk or so, it begins to kind of quiet down. It looks like we've kind of died down for the moment when it comes to big uh, solar flares. But we do have region 2825 that's just behind it, and that may actually pick up an activity as it rotates across that same patchy terrain that this region just rotated back through. So we are going to be kind of watching it very closely. I'm not quite sure we're going to get big M flares from that region, but we might see a pickup in flare activity once again. Meanwhile, as we switch to our magnetic configuration, you can see that big region there. That's region 2824, and then again region 2825. It's not nearly as large a region, but also over the past couple days, you can also see a couple regions that look like they're picking up uh, just west of region 2824. So we're going to be watching these things really closely to see whether any of them manifest and become big flare plates players, but it looks like for the moment we just have to get through these solar storms and then things might settle down. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, as you can see, right around the 18th, we were still sitting at pretty quiet conditions. The X-ray flux was pretty low, sitting around the B floor. But as we moved into about the 21st, you start seeing activity pick up a little bit with the X-ray flux. And that is when region 2824 started rotating across that really unstable region on the sun. And wham! Bang, 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 bang! There goes that machine gun again. In all, we had about 12 C-class flares or higher, with three of them being M-class flares. Now notice they're all reasonably short duration, but there were solar storms that were launched. And when we look at the propagation records for emergency uh, responders and amateur radio operators, wow, we saw some disruption on the day side, but mostly it was just noise and very short-term disruption. But in the gray line, man, propagation went kind of weird for a little bit. So if you had some issues, especially in the gray line region over the last few days, this is why. Luckily, things are beginning to calm down a little bit. Also, with that, uh, with all that disruption in the gray line, that also meant that GPS reception was probably a little bit dicey and maybe not quite so stable near dawn and near dusk. Switching to our solar storm conditions, over the past week or so, we've had a little bit of activity. In fact, back on the 18th, we did bump up to active conditions very, very short while due to a little bit of a disturbance in the solar wind. But then we jump back down to pretty much quiet conditions for the next day or so. Then uh, again, on the 20th, we got bumped back up to storm levels. This was due to a, a much larger pocket of fast solar wind that actually has brought us to storm levels before. Sadly, this time it didn't do quite so well. It only bumped us up to storm levels for a short bit, but kept us pretty much at, at uh, active conditions easily over a day. And we got some gorgeous aurora even down to the upper tier of mid-latitudes before things began to settle back down on the 21st. Now since then we've been pretty much at, at quiet levels to maybe slightly unsettled conditions but mostly quiet. But these conditions are not going to last because we are expecting the slew of solar storms to be hitting us over the next couple days and they could bump us up to easily storm levels and possibly moderate level storm uh, with a KP of 6. 
Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel is density, the bottom panel is velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we put this in motion, you can see those solar storms being fired, wham, 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 kind of like a sprinkler head, just brrrat, spraying them all out like that. And you can watch them as they come out. It does look like the uh, western edge of that first storm is gonna hit us, gonna be late on the 25th. This is also about the same time that NASA's model says it will also hit, so this is a good kind of confluence, especially when we've got such a complicated forecast. But as you can see, not just that first storm, but there's one behind it, and then even one behind it. And if those end up hitting Earth as well, where it looks like there's a good chance that they could, we could easily have storming over the 25th, the 26th, possibly even the 27th before things really finally settle down. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at the sun from Stereo's view, you can definitely see Region 2824 rapid firing off those solar flares and the big blast waves from the solar storms being launched. And then you can also see behind it, that is Region 2825. And as we get a better view from it, from Stereo, you can see that, yeah, it's got a little bit of activity, but it's not the player that 2824 is. It also hasn't really been launching uh, solar storms. So even as it rotates more into Earth view, likely we could get a little bit of flare activity, but likely nothing like the solar storm launches that we saw from region 2824. And then as we look even past that region, you can see yet another small bright region beginning to emerge in the Northern Hemisphere. And that is good news because that will mean that the solar flux will begin, will continue to stay boosted, will stay in the marginal range for radio propagation easily over this next week. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon phase, with the full moon being on the 26th. And even by the 31st, the moon will still be about 70% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, especially you solar storm chasers, if you want to catch some of those beautiful aurora views, you're going to have to ha fight with this uh, really bright companion. So be sure to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week. As promised, this is going to be a busy week. We have multiple solar storms that are Earth-directed, and at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. In fact, we're expecting about an 80% chance of a major storm, and it could easily last over three days, possibly into the weekend before things begin to calm down. Now, mid-latitudes, we're expecting minor storm conditions, but we have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm. So this means we do have a good aurora possibility to come down into mid-latitudes. And because we are having multiple solar storms hitting Earth with every successive hit, that bam, 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 every successive hit brings that aurora down just a little bit further because it rattles the Earth shield a bit more each time. So your aurora photographers, this is going to be a very good chance if those solar storms are magnetically oriented the right way, we could have some gorgeous aurora views that last for several days before it all kind of fizzles out. And switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have multiple active regions on the Earth-facing disk with several more active regions looking like they're beginning to emerge. Now for the two that are numbered, region 2824 and region 2825, we do have about a 10% chance of M-class flares. Luckily that is settling down from what we've seen over the past week, but it's still not completely out of the woods. So you GPS users, especially if you're near the, the dawn or dust terminator, please understand that you may have GPS reception issues easily over the next day or two before things begin to settle back down a little bit. But luckily, we don't have many risks for radio blackouts right now, just a small risk. And also, emergency uh, responders and amateur radio operators, these regions are keeping us uh, at the solar flux level about mid-70s, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. And the nice thing about that is that it looks like this is going to continue with those new active regions beginning to emerge. So luckily, marginal radio propagation looks like it's going to be here to stay. 
So the space weather this week has picked up in a major way. We have multiple solar storms that are on their way to Earth, with the first one hitting right around late on the 25th, but we could easily have storming from one, two, possibly three punches, easily in through the 27th and in maybe even the 28th or 29th before things completely settle down, especially at high latitudes. So Aurora photographers, make sure you have your batteries charged and stay on your toes because this could have some beautiful aurora and multiple levels of brightening, even down to mid-latitudes. But just be aware you've got that bright moon to have to contend with. So un understand you're gonna have to check those local rise and set times. Now, meanwhile, the amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're getting a little bit of a reprieve now, at least from the solar flares and the radio blackouts that we've been having, because the M flare risk is definitely dying down. So you're not hearing nearly as many pop, pop, pops on the bands right now. However, when those solar storms hit, expect that the night side propagation is going to get a little strange because we're going to have uh, probably a G2 level solar storm hitting right around by the 26th or so. And this is going to be extended over a few days. So it may not get to be good propagation again until about the weekend. So just hang in there. And then GPS users, well, the news isn't so great for you right now. We're still getting enough um, issues with solar flares that you could have some problems near dawn and near dusk. You definitely won't worry about your GPS reception there. And then also, of course, we're going to have some extended storming, possibly from late on the 25th in through even uh, close to the weekend. And so that means if you if you see Aurora, if you're any near, anywhere near Aurora, you could definitely have GPS reception issues. So be sure to just be very careful. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.